Hello everyone, my name is Burak Gözlüklü, Solutions Architect at AWS in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello everyone, my name is Ravi Gupta, I'm a Solutions Architect with AWS. Today we will talk about automating wind farm maintenance using drones and AI powered by AWS. We will start with the introduction, challenges of wind turbine operations, then we will address these challenges with a heuristic solution approach. And then we will showcase our demo, then explain the architecture behind our solution, and then finally talk about future applications. The challenge starts with the problem of accessibility. Wind farms are located in highly remote areas, especially if they are offshore. It is hard to access to those regions to perform even regular checks, such as inspections and repairs. The second is that even though we are able to reach that spot, it is then hard to climb these huge wind turbine towers and ter to perform the job. Based on reports, there are thousands of accidents happening every year, of which some, unfortunately, ends up with fatalities. Finally, every cent per kilowatt hour cost is cu crucial for the wind turbine, e wind turbine energy industry. Every penny of the cost saving is necessary to compete with non-renewable energy solutions. Therefore, they should operate the wind turbines efficiently with minimal downtime, minimal repair and maintenance costs. Every operation means cost for the wind turbine industry. Therefore, every attempt to reduce the cost of operations for a wind turbine company is more than welcome. The solution is first moving towards embracing smarter operations and automation. To do that, we need to transform the technology from manual interventions or inspections to artificial intelligence and machine learning AI ML based solutions, which are em enabled by data and definitely including robotics to support the human workforce. More specifically, these can be enabled by AWS technologies such as analytics, AIML, IoT, which is Internet of Things, and drones will be a part of that solution. And we will use one of the AWS technologies, Amazon Greengrass, to harness some of those technologies at the edge. Okay, let's see our demo. Hello, everyone. What you see on the screen are two turbines uh, rotating with the wind. Uh, the part of our wind farm demo setup. The signals from these turbines are being captured locally and being sent to AWS IoT for further analysis. In this section, we would talk about how the wind farm is connected to AWS IoT. We would talk about the few IoT services which are used to ingest data from the gateway device we talked about. So the first service we are looking at is the AWS IoT Core, uh, which is our central service, which allows you to securely connect your devices um, uh, at scale. So inside that, I'm in the test section where I am subscribing to this topic, wind speed data, where I'm looking at one of those data points which is coming from the turbines. Uh, as you can see, the data is cup flowing in, in, the, in this section. Then as the data is, we confirm that the data is coming in, I'm going to use an IoT rules engine to point it to um, other AWS IoT servers, including AWS IoT events. IoT events is our uh, service which is allows you to easily detect and respond to events from IoT sensors and application. So the data is being moved from AWS IoT core to IoT events and we built a detector model inside IoT events to be able to uh, detect any uh, out of thresh threshold values. So very basic uh, detector model as the data comes in, it lands, uh, it puts you know different turbines, uh, it's able to use the asset ID, which we saw in the previous uh, section, as a way to identify different turbines. And we have defined different thresholds for different um, values we are collecting uh, to determine if it is uh, something is in the normal range or out of uh, normal range. Based on that, it uh, stays in the normal or alarming state. So inside alarming state, uh, as soon as it lands, it sends a not notification, uh, which is basically can be to the uh, engineer on the on site to be able to take actions on those uh, notification. 
Next thing we're going to look at is the data is from the again from the IoT uh, IoT core goes also goes into uh, IoT SiteWise service. I, IoT SiteWise is a service which allows you to easily collect, organize, and analyze data from industrial equipment at scale. So we built a dashboard based on the data coming in uh, um, from different turbines. So as you can see there, we've kind of plotted those, and this is a um, live dashboard, which is you know interactive as well. So it kind of gives you a full view, a high level view of the entire site of different turbines, how each are you know uh, related to uh, you know comparing to others and this can be used by a project manager for to be able to get a very good view of the entire site so the next service we're going to look into is iot uh, greengrass greengrass is our service which allows you to bring compute messaging data management sync and ml inference capabilities to the edge devices so uh, inside the greengrass section i am looking at you know some of the some of the options available and i'm going to look at the resources as you can see, we have deployed uh, a ResNet model onto uh, using Greengrass on our device, and there are some Lambda functions deployed. So using the, the Greengrass, uh, um, we are bringing the you know the training we did on the SageMaker using the SageMaker and building this model. We are putting that onto the edge, so that you know if the device is not connected to internet, it's able to inference using this uh, trained model and take actions uh, using the local Lambda functions. In this section, we are seeing the drone which is going to fly around these turbines and capture some images using the camera on the drone itself. And those are then sent to um, the, uh, that's a nano module for inferencing uh, to detect if we are seeing any, any rust or icing on those turbines. To capture those imitated corrosion colors, brown ones, uh, we needed better shots. So Ravi took the wind turbines inside and used his iPhone to have better pictures, higher quality pictures. If you look at this picture taken from that footage, we are able to capture two corrosion sites. With a low confidence, um, the right bottom side cannot be captured. And here again, we are able to capture the corrosion side at the bottom, but Again, the confidence levels are low because these are not real corrosion pictures and we used only a couple of hundreds of pictures to drain our model. So in real life, we need thousands of pictures to have a very high confidence and the real corrosion pictures, of course. Um, but if we go back to real pictures, actually the results are better. Uh, this is another example for corrosion and this one is for the icing. Actually, you can see the drone at the right side. All of those activities that you saw so far are automatically performed. For example, once the picture is taken, the inference is performed, and those labels are incorporated by the Amazon SageMaker. And as mentioned before, those labels can trigger an SNS message, or an email for further inspection, or even trigger an event for the wind turbine, which can stop the wind turbine in case an emergency is identified by the drone. For example, let's say for this picture, the icing is noticed by a different drone, and then another anti-icing drone is sent to the site. So such playbooks can be definitely incorporated automatically in this solution. Hello everyone, in this part of the demo, we will see more action from AIML. And first of all, we selected a model called ResNet50, which is a well-known model for image classification and recognition. Well, we will, we will classify two types of issues on wind turbines. One of them is a corrosion on the blades, the other one is icing of the blades. So both two issues is, is, can be problematic and known to be problematic. Um, definitely it can be increased to more classes, but we will stick to those two for the sake of simplicity. The important part of that is the training and we would like to incorporate our existing maintenance team to do that. We could go with the Amazon Mechanical Turk, where we could reach half, more than half a million um, independent contractors, or we could work with the available companies um, in the SageMaker. No, we would like to go with, in this case, our own maintenance team, and we assume that we will be uploading our own turbine pictures. We assume that 
uh, this company has more uh, more than a decade experience so they have lots of um, images and a and, and lot of experience in that regard so that they could reflect that experience that know-how in the AI ML um, training process so they will be a part of that oh I just received an email um, it says you are invited to be a part of AI ML training process let's click to it and then I see the job description and I click to start working and then I start to throw the boxes around the corrosion parts that I think which are important and defines the corrosion. Then I do the same for the remaining almost uh, 100 uh, pictures and it took something like half an hour for me to, to finish the job. Okay, we have included our maintenance team at the beginning um, to train the AI ML. But is there any process that we can keep our maintenance team included um, in the maintenance process, even though we use AI ML? Um, yes, it is possible using Amazon SageMaker Augmented AI. So what we built is we built a process. If the AI ML inference has a low confidence, or you can put anything you want, but we just put the low confidence. If it is low confidence, then it is sent to um, the maintenance team so that they can look at it. And the good part of that, the labeling performed by these specific issues where the AI ML is not 100% confident about its decision, um, actually a threshold confidence, um, then the, the labeling performed by the real human player is then feeds back to the training process. So what happens is your AI ML algorithm becomes smarter and smarter throughout the years as well as your maintenance team is involved in the overall process. So this is the um, great collaboration between artificial intelligence and real human players, in our case, maintenance team. I received a similar message like this one. Um, I customized this email. And then once I click to the image, it brings me to the S3 bucket where I can see the labeling performed by the AI ML. Then I came back to the original message and I clicked to the perform the review one, which brought me a similar view that I had in the first email about the training one. Again, I see a human review task, the same interface. Then I start working. Then I start putting my corrosion definitions here and there. All right. In this slide, uh, we are looking at the AWS architecture, which we have used to implement this uh, setup. Uh, on the left-hand side, as you can see, the turbine uh, pictures. So we started off with some uh, open source images of the wind turbines with icing and corrosion. We trained our um, uh, SageMaker model, the ResNet uh, 50 model, uh, using the, these images. And after that, uh, once the model is being trained, it's hosted onto SageMaker. And after that, the new images, um, as they are coming in, they land into S3. And then we are uh, invoking a Lambda function to do the inference using uh, SageMaker inference. The results of the inference are sent to uh, DynamoDB. And from there on, uh, we are using uh, Lambda function as another uh, place to detect, uh, you know, sort of assessment of the of the output of the SageMaker inference. If the confidence level is too low, we are using another AWS service called Amazon Augmented AI. Another piece we are showing over here, which can be is used in this, is the Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth for the training purposes of the training of the original model. So that's the uh, machine learning piece. And once you detect there is an icing on the turbine or there is a corrosion detected, we send, use an Amazon SNS to send a notification to the field teams. Uh, this includes the GPS locations uh, as well as the, uh, the time when it's, it was reported. And with, based on that, the field team can take action. What we're seeing on the on the top uh, left hand side over here is the edge piece where we have the turbines and uh, the turbines are connected to a gateway device. Uh, in this case, we have used NVIDIA Jetson Nano board with the IoT green grass deployed on it. 
so the come of the capabilities Greengrass brings to the edge or ability to do a Lambda function on the edge, uh, as well as IoT Shadow, which allows you to sync up the device state. Um, and the next piece is the ML model. So you, with the SageMaker model we trained, we are bringing that to the edge. And the advantage of this is we don't have to go back to the cloud for inferencing. We can do uh, local inferencing on the edge. So the device, the gateway connects to uh, AWS IoT, where it sends the uh, telemetry data uh, along with the data coming in from the drone. And after that, we are using an IoT rules engine where uh, we are defining some uh, defining queries to be able to uh, pipe this data into multiple directions. So it's like fan out kind of uh, architecture as you see here. Uh, so one of the places this data is going uh, is IoT analytics, which is our uh, service where you can build out full end-to-end -end analytics uh, uh, pipelines. And that can be used for visualization purposes in Amazon QuickSight. Second piece where the IoT rules engine is going is IoT SiteWise. Uh, is, SiteWise is our service which allows you to build a very high level uh, floor level or the factory level sort of our, uh, visualization dashboards. Um, so we are using this to kind of give you a full uh, uh, you know, picture of how the different turbines are uh, working, operating, and how they compare to each other. Uh, this is for more for you know project management for you know for the entire uh, wind farm. Then the last piece is the IoT events. IoT events is uh, another AWS uh, service which allows you to detect and respond different states of the devices. So we are detecting if the the threshold uh, for certain parameters, like say uh, turbine speed or rotations per second of the turbine, if that breaches a certain threshold, which can be potentially dangerous for uh, turbines. So next slide, we will talk about the future application. So there are a few pieces uh, where we feel you know this mo this uh, demo can improve. Uh, number one is uh, we talked about the gateway. Uh, and we talked about the drone. Uh, one of the improvements is we are we have uh, for the future is strapping the gateway onto the drone, so that it's uh, the drone is not communicating to the gateway via Wi-Fi. Rather, it's just uh, everything is on the same single hardware, so you get more more real time uh, inferencing as compared to just transmitting it over Wi-Fi. The second uh, piece we are looking at is some sort of local event generation. Um, so right now for event generation of like if you're detecting different states of the device, you have to send that information to IoT events. Um, bringing that logic somehow to uh, on the edge to be able to sort of alert the teams if there is no internet connection, you know, somehow, you know, uh, taking some local actions when something like that happens. The next piece we are uh, looking into is predictive maintenance with all this telemetry data coming in into IoT Analytics. IoT Analytics also integrates with SageMaker to help you build machine learning models. Uh, so uh, we are looking into how we can build uh, predictive maintenance models using IoT Analytics and SageMaker to help you determine if the turbine has particular parts which are going to fail. The next piece uh, is the, the, you know, we are using multi uh, use of multiple types of drones. So extending this into ability to be able to have a drone which is, you know, can be used for de-icing purposes. Uh, the, the idea is again, is like doing local inferencing on, on the edge as well as taking actions. So, uh, you know, uh, you are able to detect that they are icing on a particular blade of the turbine. At the same point, you are taking actions using spraying, uh, you know, anti-freezing liquids on top of those blades to take care of the icing problem. All right, thank you for watching. And uh, please don't forget to uh, complete our survey.